That's right, Danielle. I didn't invite you. That's because it was a customer appreciation party for the Aiden Center for Plastic Surgery. Danielle, you have to understand that I am the face and the liposucked body of the company. I simply can't risk having someone flip a switch at a party that I worked very hard on. Certainly not when I am the face of the company. I mean, unless someone gives me a condescending smirk. And then I might have to go off on you. Excuse me, my husband just texted me. Am I blushing? He just told me I looked like I needed a chemical peel. That bill is so romantic. Hi everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed. This is the recap of The Real Housewives of New Jersey, Season 10, Episode 3, 40 and Fancy Free. My Jennifer costume was a little too much for me to stay in, so I decided to go a little bit more comfortable. Wait a minute. Wouldn't the first team to go be the first one to finish? Then they would be the winners, right? <laughs> no, you're the winner even when you don't have the fastest time. That's about the size of it. My favorite thing about when I do these hairstyles and everything is that I'm always imagining somebody like say a year from now I get a new subscriber and they start going back and watching some of my old stuff. And I always think they're going to be like, what the hell is she doing with her hair? Oh, that's funny. Kind of like my husband. Totally oblivious, not understanding. Although now he kind of just looks at me and goes, filming? To which I usually reply, uh, no. How dare you, sir? I worked on this look all day. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so episode three opens with Jennifer wrangling her kids who she calls savages. So uh, I'm not too far off the mark there because one of them is climbing the outside of her house. Yeah. Anyway, uh, they're off somewhere. Jackie's in the car with her kids telling stupid jokes. But the best part is Dolores having an almost identical scene to Jennifer's in episode one where she is trying to wrestle her body into this waist trainer. Only the twist here is that she gets her ex-husband to help zip her in. Yeah, I wonder if David would like that. You know, there's so much, okay, they live together, they get along, that's fine, but mm, to help her into her undergarments? I'm just saying a lesser man might feel threatened by that. I don't know if David cares, but it feels a little borderline to me. Then we cut over to Melissa and Joe's, and Joe is bringing her breakfast in bed because it's her 40th birthday, and they're talking about her big party that night, and she said Larry's taking care of everything. He's got the venue, the food, the decor, the drinks, everything. All we have to do is write the check. And Joe's like, mmm. <laughs> she said, but I'm a little nervous because all of my friends, like nobody's talking to each other right now. And I'm just afraid they're going to choose the party as the venue to kind of hash it out. And Joe said, uh, they better not with how much money we're spending. We don't know how much money, do we? I'm sure it's ridiculous. Next, we're in bed with Margaret and Joe. My favorite place to be. And Margaret's like, oh my God, I'm physically exhausted from yesterday. Look at my leg, Joe. I think it's a blood clot. It's not. It's a nasty bruise, but it's not a blood clot. And she's like, I think you have to rub my leg. Then she tells him that Marge Sr., after 20 years, is getting kicked out of her apartment and she needs to find another one. But she's too exhausted to help her look, so she might have to move in with them. And Joe goes, no. <laughs> I don't think you and I could handle living in the same house with her. 
And she said, yeah, I know you're right. She starts telling him a little bit about her altercation with Danielle from the, the day before. Margaret's a little nervous about seeing Teresa for the first time too because she doesn't understand why Teresa keeps taking Danielle's side over hers. Then we cut back to Melissa and Joe in bed. And Melissa basically says the same thing. Margaret doesn't understand. And Joe goes, I don't know. Margaret seems like a good friend. And Danielle is just like a black cloud wherever she goes. But I did hear that there is a little trouble in paradise with Teresa and Danielle. They blocked each other on social media. So I believe there's a little trouble a brewing finally. I just posted on Instagram like seriously they must have dirt on each other because what else could be the reason for the loyalty between the two of them? At least on Teresa's side I think possibly it's because Danielle is just totally sucking up to her. I mean she literally let her walk all over her right? She got down on all fours and let her step on her back to get over that wall so that kind of makes sense on Teresa's end but I still think Danielle has got some dirt on her or they have dirt on each other that is so bad that they have both just agreed we are just gonna get along and never speak of it so this there being a little rift between them is interesting to me because you know if it gets bad enough Danielle's gonna spill her guts about Teresa if if Danielle has something on Teresa we will all know and probably vice versa they both kind of play dirty, so yeah, it'll be interesting. Oh, also side note, I know you guys heard about the new city, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. I would love to know what you guys think. Leave your comments below. For sure, I'm gonna watch it. I think I'm gonna try recapping it. Depending on when it's on, I don't know, we'll see. But I'm gonna give it a chance. I am slightly afraid that Shane will be on as Utah is the only state where he has a valid license to practice law. Yeah, did you hear that? He failed the bar exam again. Again, for the fourth time. I mean, it might be time to pack up and move back to Utah, right? Sorry, back to the show. Anyway, Joe Gorga says he's going to talk to his sister because he knows Teresa can fly off the handle. He said, she's got enough going on in her life. So I'm going to talk to her about that. And Melissa's like, yeah, I think probably you're the only one that can get through to her. No, come on. I mean, seriously, can anybody get through to her? Not really. Now we cut over to Teresa and Nono is making another delicious dish. Oh my God. I need a Nono in my house. <laughs> And then Joe calls from the ICE detention center. It's the same old thing. She's like, are you okay? And he's like, am I okay? What, what, what? I'm here 38 months. They want to separate me from my wife of 20 years. I've got four kids. They want to separate our family. Of course I'm not okay. She talked about like him not wanting the girls to visit. And he goes, because I, I don't know even, I don't know what it's going to be like here. I don't understand. Nobody knows what they're doing here. It's crazy. I'm going to get deported. And she goes, you don't know that. And he said, Listen, I don't see anybody here getting out. They're all getting deported. He's probably right. So they hang up and Teresa's like, I can't take this anymore. And Nono is pissed. Yeah, he's like, I slap your husband. He never did anything right. Six times I tell him, go make a citizen. He say, I go. But he never did. He gotta blame himself. And he's right. Okay, the next scene is apartment shopping for Marge Sr. They go to one apartment complex that has a one bedroom or a three bedroom. And of course, Marge Sr. likes the three bedroom, but it's $5,000 a month. And Margaret said, Kababa, you don't wanna use up all your money. And on a place that's too big for you and that I'm gonna have to be kicking in a lot. They don't have a two bedroom available at that time. So she said, let's go somewhere else. And Marge Sr. said, well, can we do it another day? Because I have an event in the city at five o'clock I need to go to. So she, Marge Sr. is living her best life and doesn't have a lot of time for Margaret. Now we are at dinner with Dolores and her father, Larry. Have we ever met Larry before? 
I don't think so. Larry apparently had an aneurysm behind his eye and they caught it in time. There's three blocked arteries. They call it the Widowmaker because normally you don't even know you have it until you're dead. So she wants to make sure he eats healthy. He orders pasta. She's like, that's the wrong thing, Dad. She orders fish. But he he's like her mom. Do you guys remember? She was trying to get her mom to eat right, but... Her mom just likes, you know, her donuts at breakfast time and stuff. So that's going to be a little bit of a problem. I don't think she's going to change their ways, you know. So, yeah, I, I mean, I feel bad. But then he starts talking about how he saw David and he's like, you know, how are you with that? Because he's always going to put his job first. And she goes, I'm good. I'm fine with it. I'm in no hurry. He's not jerking me around, Dad. And he goes, OK, but is there a light at the end of the tunnel? Well, no, he said, is there an end to the tunnel? But that's what he meant. He goes, what are you, what are you doing? And she goes, I'm coasting. And he goes, you're too old to coast. Oh, God. Some tough love from Larry. That scene ends with Dolores saying, Dad, you know, I got to tell you, you scared every boy I ever went out with. And he goes, well, I don't know why that would be. And she goes, um, because you cleaned your gun in front of them. And he goes, oh. That was just the getting to know you part. <laughs> it's me, Margaret. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but we'll be right back. Okay, so now we are back at Jennifer's house, and she is, I, I like this. Wait, first of all, I would just like to say that personally, I miss Tequila Jen. I think she was a stellar addition to the show last season, and I miss her very much. I want Jennifer to be healthy and happy, but there is a part of me that hopes that we will see Tequila Jen again in the future. Having said that, I'm liking Jennifer this season. I know it's early, I know it's early, but so far I am liking her. I love the talk that she had with her daughter last week. And in the scene I'm watching right now, she is making a healthy lunch for everybody. She wants them to try bulgur, which is like a brown rice dish. And she's got some broccoli on the plate. That's a step in the right direction. Also, she's having a conversation with Bill about the day before. He said he had to go into work early because he has to do surgery on a woman. And she said, well, you need to check me out, Bill, because I am sore from yesterday. Everybody is sore from that ridiculous obstacle course. And Bill said, is it serious? And she said, I, no, I think I'm just, I'm just sore. It's fine. And he said, well, I'll check you out later then. So she was telling him that once they got to Dolores' house, she told the group about Gabby and her issues with the bullies at school. And Margaret said that she was equating that to maybe that's how Jackie felt. Bill said that bully was a big word and he didn't think it was quite bullying. But Jennifer said, let me show Gabby and see what she thinks. I think it got to Jennifer when Margaret said to her, I think if kids were imitating Gabrielle, you might feel differently about it. So I think that's kind of resonating with her a little bit. Anyway, she is now showing the video of her impersonating Jackie to her daughter Gabby. Oh, but before that, we are going to do a little cutting back and forth because now we cut over to Margaret and Jackie who are looking for a present for Melissa for her 40th birthday. They're teasing, like saying, oh, thank God she's finally 40 because, you know, she's making us feel old. And Jackie said that even though I'm only 42, I still feel a lot older for some reason. And Margaret said, well, what do you think that makes me then? But you know what? You're as old as you feel. And I, f I feel like we're all about the same age, except for Jennifer. She seems a lot younger than me. And Jackie said, oh, well, Jennifer's like a child. I mean, can you believe that video of her imitating me? So now we cut back to that video of her imitating her, but this is Gabrielle watching it. And Gabrielle said, well, if it was happening to me, it would hurt my feelings. And Jennifer said, well, from where I was coming from, it was just supposed to be a joke. Then we cut back to Jackie and Margaret. Jackie says, you know, the kids were friends. Evan and Bill got along well. It, we had a really nice relationship, and that's why this really kind of burns. 
And both Margaret and Jackie think that Jennifer is still up Teresa's ass and wanting her to like her. Teresa is the cool kid. It's, oh God, it just even sounds so bizarre to say that. It's just like the Tres Amigas being the cool or the popular girls. Ew, no. Nowhere else in the world other than on these TV shows would you consider Teresa or Shannon, Vicky, and Tamara to be the end-all, be-all girls that you want to be like. You know? <laughs> That's not just me, right? Cutting back to Jennifer's house, Gabrielle said that if it hurt her feelings, I think you should apologize. And, you know, that's not what Jennifer wanted to hear, I don't think. So she kind of goes off on a little bit of a tangent about how, well, you know, she said my kids were spoiled and she's not innocent herself, you know, going on and on. But to her credit, in the end, I think it is sinking in and she wants her daughter to be proud of her. And she said she was going to deal with it. And I, I believe her. I think she might apologize. Oh my God, Teresa, just have sex with Tony already. Good Lord. The sexual chemistry between the two of them is making me uncomfortable. <laughs> Tony is over uh, looking at the pool progress. And she's like, hey, how's it coming along, Tony? Fast. It's going real fast. And she's like, I just want it done by summer for the girls. And he's like, well, uh, if it wasn't uh, somebody i known all my life, then I'll get it done for you, Teresa. And she's like, how long have we known each other? And her hand is like lingering on his arm. I guess 40 years they've known each other. Now Joe Gorga comes up and she's like, Joey, how come I never took Tony to the prom? And he's like, uh, I don't know. So he shakes hands with Tony and he's like, what are you doing here? He's just checking on the pool. And Joe's like, yeah, so what is this costing you? <laughs> Everybody but Teresa is concerned about the cost of that pool. Teresa goes, I'm getting the family discount. Tony said, normally it would be about 150 but uh, for your sister, it'll be 50, 60. So she's getting a pretty good discount. I mean, okay, that is a big discount. If the whole thing was gonna cost 150,000 and it's only costing her 50, well, yeah, that's an excellent discount, but it's still $50,000. In her confessional, she said, I don't know why my brother is butting in. Everybody thinks I can't afford stuff, but I make money. I work really hard. Okay, I mean, I think she does. You can say a lot about Teresa. I would not say she's lazy. After all this happened with Joe going in prison and all that, she has a good work ethic. Is there some luck involved along the way? Well, yes, because not any housewife who now finds herself a single mother of four can just write a cookbook of family recipes and have it be as successful. I mean, the show, her fame, that's propelling her along the way. But I'm not going to take away from the fact that I do think she works. However, you also have four children that you're going to have to put through college. I believe you are racking up some kind of legal bills here. I mean, I don't know what to say. My usual go-to is if you're not asking me for money, I don't care what you spend your money on. So I guess I'm just going to have to stick with that. As long as it doesn't take away from things that are important, then she can spend her money on whatever she wants. In the grand scheme of things with these housewives, I mean, 50 grand, it's not like she spent it on a Birkin bag. At least the kids will enjoy the pool. All right, so now Joe and Teresa go in the house and Nono is there. He made a salad for himself. My salad! And then he goes off to eat it and Joe's like, that's good, you're eating healthy now. Teresa says, my abs hurt. And he goes, yeah, from the obstacle course? Hold up a second. Side note, doesn't she work out like a fiend? I mean, how is that stupid obstacle course making her sore? In fact, at the time it was happening, when she couldn't get over the wall and Danielle just kind of flew over it, I was thinking, this is weird. 
isn't Teresa like all about physical fitness? I don't know. I'm finding that very strange. And now that her abs are sore, maybe she just took a break after her competition, you know, because she was like not eating at all and working out like crazy when she was training for that. Maybe she's just taking a break. Anyway, so Joe said, yeah, I heard about that. I heard there was some drama there. And she goes, well, I just didn't like Margaret called Danielle a prostitute. And I just thought that was pretty effed up. Uh, you're the first person that called her a prostitute. So Joe is trying to tell her, listen, four people all feel the same way about Danielle out of five. Do you see the percentage here? And he goes, listen, don't be naive just watch your back and she's like okay he said you know because she could manipulate you Teresa no she would never do that because she knows better sounds like they have made some kind of a pact just saying he's trying to say that Margaret sees that you're taking Danielle's side and she goes I'm not taking Danielle's side but I do see that Margaret kind of rags on Danielle a lot. And then she gets physical. By physical, she means like throwing wine in her face because I do not think those two threw down that I recall. She's like, yeah, you shouldn't be inviting Jackie to that party either after all she says about me. And Joe's kind of like, okay, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of stuck in the middle here. And, uh, and he said, you got a lot going on. And she's like, I got a lot of other stuff going on with Joe and all this legal stuff and how it's affecting my daughters. And he's like, yeah, that's right. You worry me sometimes because I don't even know how you can do it all. But like you explode then. And she's like, well, you should be talking to Jackie and Margaret and telling them to not talk about me and to stay away from me. Otherwise, it's not going to be good. So... <laughs> If Joe's plan was to have no drama at Melissa's birthday party that he spent so much money on, then he might not have made as much progress as he thought. Side note, back in defense of Teresa, how much do you think Joe is spending on the birthday party? You know, I mean, maybe not 50 grand, but 20, do you think? I don't know, but I'm just saying that's for one night and, and you have nothing to show for it. At least a swimming pool is like a thing that you'll have now that her daughters will have for years to come. Uh, yeah, it's time for a commercial break, but we'll be right back. Okay, I think it's the day of the party now. And oh, you guys, I cannot wait to find Melissa's eyeballs somewhere in the party. I hope they're hidden somewhere. So everyone's getting ready. Over at Margaret's house, she's talking to Joe, and she goes, oh, Marge Senior, you'd think the party was for her. She took the day off of work to get herself all glamorous. I mean, where was that enthusiasm when I was looking for an apartment for her? Side note, Margaret has all those, like, silicone, you know, like those patches for wrinkles. She's got them on her forehead and under her eyes and, like, her chin and her smile lines. But look at how she's got it on her chin. It's like she's smashing her cheek into a crease. Doesn't that look like she's probably making it worse? Like, she's really creasing that smile line. Over at Jackie's house, the kids are like, where are you going? Why are you dressed up? And she said, oh, mommy and daddy are going to, um, you know, Gino and Antonio's mom. It's her birthday. How old do you think she is? And her daughter said, 50? And she goes, oh, she's not going to like that. And she goes, well, she's pretty. And Evan goes, good save. And then Jackie goes, is she prettier than mommy? And the little girl goes, mm. I mean, she's not wrong. Then over at Dolores is, she's, she wants Frank Sr. He's like, where's the party at? And she said, it's, I can't remember where she said, but she goes, I want you in like a dressy, like a black jean. You know, I think you should wear like black jeans. And he goes, okay. And she goes, I want to get you in a skinny jean. And he goes, I can't, Dolores, because when it's tight at the ankle, it doesn't fit my calves. And then he said, is David coming? And she goes, he's working in Hoboken, so he'll be nearby. Um, maybe he'll come later. And Frank, 
I hope he comes. You know, I don't mind being a third wheel. And she goes, Frank, you're not a third wheel. We're all equals. And that would be Dolores confirming the thruple that we all thought was happening. Over at Teresa's house, while she's getting ready, Gia is giving her sage advice about how she should handle things if Margaret says something against Danielle. Mom, you, you should just say, I'm on your side too, Margaret, but when so many people are against Danielle, I'm going to defend her a little bit. And Teresa's like, oh, that's good. That's not what I would have said. Yeah, yeah, we know what you would have said. And then we go over to Jennifer's house. And Jennifer, for her 42nd birthday, instead of having a party, she is planning to ask the girls to go on a trip with her to someplace in the Caribbean, maybe Jamaica. So now she's in her room getting her makeup done while Gabrielle is sitting there. Where was this girl last year? We never heard from her, but she is the sweetest kid. And also very reminiscent of Jolie. I, I gotta tell you, I don't know if this is, if there's something in the water or if it's just the way Bravo is filming all this or what, but these daughters, these daughters, they're just so great. Jennifer says to her that after I talked with you, I'm going to apologize to Jackie tonight. Let's do role playing like you're Jackie. And she's like, okay. And she kind of fixes her hair a little. It's cute. And Jennifer goes, Hey Jackie, so I'm sorry you were upset, but I was just trying to make a little joke. And right away Gabby goes, no but, you just have to be really sincere and just be like, you know, I'm really sorry I hurt your feelings and I hope you can accept my apology. And Jennifer's like, okay, but the but defends my point of view. And Gabby says, are you there to defend your point of view or are you there to apologize? I swear to God, who is raising these kids? So Jennifer goes, okay, noted. It was meant to be funny though. It is such a cute scene, you guys. <clears throat> okay, next, Melissa and Joe show up at the venue and yeah, there's not gonna be a game to find out where Melissa's eyes are because they're everywhere. There are giant posters of them. They are in an ice sculpture. They're everywhere, along with other pictures of her. But yeah, the close-up of her eyes. I mean, in some ways, it's not as creepy as I thought. But in other ways, I kind of hate it. Okay, people are starting to arrive. Margaret and Jackie are there and Melissa is hugging them and she said, I just want to tell you guys that I love you both so much. A lot of my old friends are here, but I consider you guys my new friends and I love you just as much and you know, it's all big happy love fest. And she said, are you talking to Jennifer? And Jackie said, no, but you know what? I'm just realizing that she just wants Teresa. She wants to be best friends with Teresa and that's okay. We're just never going to be the way we used to be. Melissa said, I would just love for you two to be able to be in a room together and be cordial with one another. And she said, yeah, I don't see any reason why we can't do that. Oh, you guys, we get a Ramona sighting. I love it. <laughs> the best part is that the Chiron says Ramona, Melissa's friend. Oh, God. Anyway, Ramona said, you're 40? I'm 20 years older than you. And Melissa goes, no, you're not. You're 62. And she's like, shut up. I would shout to the rooftops if I were Ramona that I'm 62 because she looks so fantastic. I would kill somebody to look like that. Oh, Margaret was having a little moment in her confessional. March Sr. shows up and right away she's saying hello to Melissa's mother. At one point, Margaret turns around and she goes, Oh, March Sr., you're here. You didn't even come over and say hello to me. In Margaret's confessional, she said, You know, when I was young, March Sr. was a partier and she would just go out all the time and I would be like, grabbing onto her ankles, begging her, Don't go, don't go. I'd be at home with my grandparents while she was out partying. 
So anyway, it was just sad because she started to cry a little bit in her confessional and said, I know my mother loves me. She's like, you think you get over your childhood stuff, but it kind of sticks with you. I just felt bad for her because I really thought she was always just kidding about Marge Sr. doing stuff in the city and hanging out and partying all the time. And I thought she was just kind of almost having fun with it. But I guess if you grew up with your mother like that the whole time and not being home with you and nurturing you, uh, yeah, I mean, that might be a little triggering. Okay, so Jennifer and Bill get there and Bill's saying that he's only gonna give her one drink. Joe Gorga, however, gets at least one tequila shot in her, so hoping there's more to come. But now she's over talking to Teresa. And Teresa said she's going to go talk to Margaret because Margaret was mad and she's going to discuss that. And she said, but I felt like it was four against one all ganging up on Danielle. Which, side note, when were they all ganging up on Danielle? Other than the fact that Melissa didn't invite her to her birthday party, Melissa didn't say anything to her. Jennifer did say, you're right, I didn't invite you to my party, but that's because I thought you were going to flip a switch. But she was talking calmly. Dolores didn't say a word. Margaret. Margaret's the only one that got into it with Danielle. That's hardly a gang up. But of course, you know, that's the story they're sticking to. So anyway, Jennifer says to her, listen, I was talking to my daughter and she got me thinking and I think I need to apologize to Jackie. But not yet. (laughs) And she sips on her drink and Teresa goes, you do what you have to do, but I don't like the f***ing bitch. Ooh, okay. I am not the only one that likes tequila Jen. Joey Gorga. Jen, Jen, Jen. He's got another shot for her. I love tequila Jen. Hence my little speech earlier about it. But I'm a little disturbed by Joe Gorga plying her with drinks. You know what I'm saying? That is just not sitting well with me. Okay, so now Jennifer, plied with more liquid courage, is talking to Margaret and Dolores. And they are both telling her, yes, go do it. Go apologize to Jackie. Um, Dolores is like, but Jennifer, no buts. After you apologize, cut off your tongue. She's like, okay, go, go, go. When she leaves, Dolores says to Margaret, what are the odds that Jennifer's going to fuck up this apology? <laughs> and Margaret's like, ah, uh, pretty good. Sober Jennifer is already apology challenged. Drug Jennifer, there's no fucking apology. Oh, my God. Oh, Jennifer. It doesn't go well. She goes up to Jackie. Jackie, hi. You know... And it's like she's trying to hold her hands. Jackie's trying to take her hand away. I know you took it as me making fun of you, but I took it as I'm just impersonating someone. Good Lord, she somehow pulls out an apology. She ends well with, I didn't mean to hurt you and I'm sorry. And Jackie, I don't know if Jackie was just so glad it was over or what, but she's like, that's all I wanted. And if I didn't like you, I wouldn't have been so hurt. It's all I needed, honey. Okay, so now people across the room are noticing that the two are hugging and getting along and they're like, oh, this is good, this is good. Margaret goes over there and she goes, did you two make up? And Jackie goes, yes, it was one of the most sincere, loving apologies that... Here comes Teresa. Margaret... Can I talk to you? And Margaret's like, uh, okay. And the music is like, don, 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 don. Am I in Twilight Zone? Teresa has a very decent apology. She kind of sticks to the script that Gia gave her. And I cannot believe it. She tells Margaret that her, her friendship means a lot to her and that she felt like Danielle was getting ganged up on, and she's not taking her side, but she wanted to defend her. Margaret was happy with that, and the two of them go off. Now all the husbands are together having fun. Joe Gorga says about Frank Sr., who thinks he's banging Dolores? 
right away Joe Benigno raises his hand and some other guy raises their hand and Bill goes, I don't want to accuse him of something that he is not already doing. And laughter all around. Okay, now the full cast is there. They're standing together and everyone's a little drunk. Everyone's asking where David is. Is David coming? Is David coming? And she's like, does it look like David is here? No, he's not. He's not coming. He can't make it. That's annoying her. Somebody, oh God. Jennifer said something about blowjobs. And Dolores said, I never do that. And they're like, you've never done that? And she goes, I'm lying like a bitch right now. <laughs> I have never seen Dolores tipsy. I like it. So, like I said, everyone is there, including Tequila Jen. Oh, girl, I missed you. And she says, Melissa, your party is very bougie. And it's nice and all. But we need to go to Jamaica. I put my husband's money where my mouth is. I'm paying for everything. Woo! It's my birthday, and that's how I roll, motherfuckers. <laughs> Everybody is laughing and having fun. And Margaret goes, she's an Aries. Everyone's an Aries. Aries, Aries, Aries meaning her, Melissa, and Jennifer. And Jackie goes, I'm a Libra, Teresa. My mother was a Libra. And Jackie goes, really? And she goes, yeah, and Gabriella. Libras are really nice people. I don't get it. Well, that took the smile off of Jackie's face. Okay, so now it's speech time, and Joe is talking about how 15 years ago I met this girl, and she's still beautiful at 40 years old. Then he gets real serious. Honestly, though, I hope when I'm 90, I'm still banging you every day, Melissa. So then Melissa's like, DJ, I need you to play some good music, and we get on display. And then there's this big parade kind of thing at the end oh my god did you guys see the guy coming out in a shopping cart a shopping cart how much did you pay for this party again come on larry granted it was painted gold but it was still a shopping cart okay and that is where this episode ends Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. If you haven't yet subscribed to Jill Informed, please do so. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave a comment. I love to hear from you guys. Okay, due to the holiday this week, I might be a little late getting my video out, so please bear with me. For those of you that celebrate, I hope you have a very happy Thanksgiving with your family or friends or whoever you celebrate with. And I will see you next time for The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Bye.